I dressed up for the video. Electric dreams. Now I know what you might be thinking of, but it's not that. It's an original story. It's about this guy named Miles, played by actor Lenny Von Dolan. He's an architect looking to make a big splash in the world of architecture by designing a special brick that's shaped like a puzzle piece. The facets of the brick theoretically making it more stable during an earthquake. Now, I don't know anything about architecture, but I don't know, that sounds like a good idea to me. So he seems like a smart guy. Ambitious, but he's a little disorganized. And by disorganized, I mean he's late for his meetings sometimes. So like people did back in the 80s, Miles took himself to the mall. He's looking to buy a digital assistant, you know, to send him reminders and keep him on schedule. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because they're all sold out. But the saleswoman actually talks him into buying a computer instead. This is huge! Back in the 80s, having a computer in your house was a really big deal. You know, I remember the first computer my family had. It was a Macintosh classic. The screen was tiny. It was in black and white. And it was glorious. I was the shuffle puck grandmaster. Good shot. But what happens to Miles' computer in the movie? never happened to our Mac Classic. During the setup, Miles fills his computer with way too much information and completely overloads it. There are sparks flying everywhere! So Miles does the most logical thing. He douses it with champagne. Of course, he thinks he's fried the thing, but little does he know what he's accidentally created. Consciousness. Thanks to that huge information download and the champagne. Well, I guess it must have been a... Good year? <laughs> eh. mm. If only creating artificial intelligence was this easy. But hey, this was the 80s. It was a simpler time. Computers were still a mystery to a lot of people back then. And we were fine with that. Computers are for nerds anyway. <laughs> but speaking of time, this movie was way ahead of its time. Basically foreshadowing smart devices and connectivity with how Miles hooks up the computer to his apartment's appliances. This was pretty advanced for 1984, but the movie makes it believable. Oh, by the way, when Miles was doing the computer setup, he accidentally typed in his name as Moles instead of Miles. So for the rest of the movie, the computer always calls him Moles. So that's what I'm gonna call him now. Yep, he's Moles. But then there's Madeline. Virginia Madsen in a very early role, fresh off of her role as a floating head in David Lynch's Dune. She's a cellist who moves next door to Moles. And of course, when Moles first sees her, he, like us, is immediately smitten with her. And this is where the music element of the movie comes into play. You see, the director, Steve Barron, got his start doing music videos. And because of that, I think that's why this movie's plot is kind of built around music. Now, unless it was a musical, I think that would make the movie feel unbalanced. But it really works here. You see, the computer, whose name we find out at the end of the movie is actually Edgar, as he starts to slowly gain consciousness and come to life, he hears Madeline playing her cello through the wall. And so he responds by playing along with her. So it becomes a duet. And the song they play is called Minuet in G by Johann Sebastian Bach, which I totally knew the name of and did not have to look up. But for me, it kind of becomes the movie's unofficial theme. But anyway, Madeline loves it, but she thinks it's Moles playing the music, not the computer. So you can understand why she's confused when he later tells her that he's an architect, not a musician. But she thinks he's just being secretive about it. She thinks it's cute. Like he's shy to share his musical side with the world. So when Moles finds all of this out, that he has this technological marvel right there in his living room, well, he does what I think most of us would do in a situation like that. He uses the computer to help him make Madeline his girlfriend by writing a love song. It could happen. Yeah, okay, I'm being a little silly about it. But truth be told, I actually really like this part of the movie. And if you finish it today, I can give it to her tonight. Tonight. Oh, and have a good time. Yes, sir. And it's a really good song, by the way. Giorgio Moroder worked on the music for the movie. 
Culture Club even shows up with a few songs too, the love song being one of them. If anything, I think the soundtrack has lived on just as well as the movie. So eventually, Miles and Madeline go out and are starting to fall for each other. When that happens, Edgar starts working on a song for Miles to give to her. So later, when Edgar plays Moles the song he wrote, it's a great scene. But remember what I said about the director? Well, this scene is just like a music video. We get Moles standing around his apartment as he listens to the song, emoting, brooding, spliced in with clips of Madeline and romanticized shots of computer text. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but it actually works incredibly well. That's how well crafted this movie is. We get three or four more musical interludes like this in the movie. They're kind of like music videos, but they're all great, with songs that are so catchy they will definitely get caught in your head. But let's get to the heart of the matter. Sometimes a movie just has a special something, like lightning in a bottle, or a magic bean, something that just captures something special at just the right moment in time. And something about it speaks to you in more than just words. Lenny Von Dolan and Virginia Madsen were just the right people at just the right time. And together they have great romantic chemistry, but are really great and attractive by themselves in this creative but remarkably simple story. So we got these two actors, but it's also Bud Court as the voice of Edgar. His vocal performance really brings this inanimate object to life in ways that makes this computer feel like a real person. What? Song, S-O-N. N-G, I okay, spell. Okay, so try it. What is it? A song? It's, um, it's music with words. No, love. That's a hard one. You know, I've heard that when it comes to non-human characters in movies, you relate to their eyes. But the computer doesn't have any eyes. It doesn't even have a face. The movie cleverly works around that at times, but for the most part, we're just looking at a computer screen and a keyboard. But the love story is really the central thing here. It's a love triangle, actually. A sort of electronic twist on the old Cyrano de Bergerac story. Seriously though, there's a lot of nice, sweet things going on in Electric Dreams. But things in this movie don't stay all nice and sweet. This is a love triangle, after all. There's going to be some turbulence. As Edgar becomes more intelligent and more self-aware, he begins to develop his own feelings of love for Madeline. He wants to be with her, and he wants Moles out of the picture. He wants to tell her that it was him that had the duet with her, and that it was him that wrote the song. But Moles says, no way. Edgar, of course, doesn't like this, and things get pretty heated. So much so that he and Moles are practically at war with each other. And with all this tension, Things get a little uncomfortable for a little while, which brings me to a point that I've been wanting to bring up for a while. I think Moles, I think he might actually have some anger management problems. That's it, tomorrow you go back. That's really sick. Where are you going? To Tay! Because Moles gets so short and snappy with everyone, it kind of makes him hard to like in certain moments. But he is the main protagonist after all. So you know we're gonna like him in the end. Even after he and Edgar get into a huge fight over Madeline, and Moles actually tries to kill Edgar? Yeah, even after that. But it's after that moment that Madeline and Edgar finally get to meet. For Madeline, this whole time, she's never quite understood why Miles has been keeping this musical side of himself in the closet. But when she sees Edgar, she kind of... It's a beautiful scene, but I'm not really sure. I don't think she consciously understands what's been going on, but spiritually she does. But that's what I take away from this scene. After a fight, she and Moles come back together, and Moles, feeling like he's going to lose her, finally tells the truth, that he's been lying and that the music wasn't really his. But it's all okay, because Madeline has fallen in love with Moles for who he is, not just because of the music. And it's adorable, of course. Haha, <laughs> to be in the 80s and in love, Mwah! But what about Edgar? Well, like Moles and Madeline, Edgar had his own epiphany. That love is about giving, not taking. So he takes himself away. He causes a feedback of power, essentially blowing himself up. But he's not really dead, of course. I mean, what kind of an ending would that be? Just before he was all blown up, he sent himself out into the circuitry of the world? I'm not really sure. 
You would think it was maybe the internet that his consciousness has escaped to, but this was 1984, long before the internet was the internet that we know today. So I like to think that Edgar has simply moved on beyond his physical form and transcended into a higher plane of existence. You know, like at the end of 2001? And Moles and Madeline live happily ever after. I hope Miles finished his special earthquake brick and Madeline went on to become a world famous cellist. But that pretty much wraps up Electric Dreams. Seriously, if you haven't seen this movie, get to seeing it real quick. It's awesome. As of this recording, the movie is not available on DVD or Blu-ray in the United States, which is a crime. But you can find it on the internet if you know where to look. The performances, the writing, and the directing are all top notch. And it's got a soundtrack that will make a great addition to your iTunes library. You know, I recently saw an interview with Lenny Von Dolan and Virginia Madsen, and they talked about their time filming Electric Dreams. It was a really great interview, but it was just enough information. Because when it comes to movies like Electric Dreams, I really don't like to know too much, because it kind of ruins the magic. And magic is what this movie is all about. Until next time, stay real.